Hello everybody, and welcome back. It's been a while. Uh, but anyway, I've had a lot of new frames joining the game, and some confusion with past videos and YouTubers saying things that were true at the time, but are no longer true right now. So I'm trying to do this to basically say, like, yes, this is how stuff is. So essentially what I'm doing today is I'm going to, it's going to be a bit longer of a video, so if you want to just see my conclusions, like, there'll be a... Uh, just skip to the end, and you'll be able to um, see my conclusion on these three Warframes. Basically, I'm showing you, or explaining, what's the best starter frame in Warframe? Now, we have three starter frames to begin with. We have Excalibur, Volt, and Mag. And I'm going to be showing them off um, and giving each one of their abilities a score. And then doing a test with the Warframe at level 70, kind of just an average for a lot of endgame content, to try and show you just which one is, you know, the best. Which one do you want to hold on to for a long time? Because all of these, all three of these Warframes are really good. However, um, this is Excalibur. I'm using Excalibur Umbra since um, there's, not, there's not too much of a difference. And Excalibur Umbra is pretty easy to get. Um, today, with these Warframes, I'm going to be using the Sabaris Prime, the Vekor Marlock, and the Dakra Prime, as well as a Taxton. So, Excalibur. Quickly right here, possibility if you need. Here's my mod setup. Uh, my Arcanes are just really simple and not even fully leveled yet. Just kind of for survivability and extra damage on a few weapons. Here's kind of my, uh, you know, mod setup. I don't even know if I needed the extra forma. I don't know, um, that I put on it, um, and then here's my, uh, also another zero form of setup for my Exalted Blade, now, however, uh, let's get on to the abilities, and I'm gonna rank them 1 through 10, 10 being insane, godlike, just totally broken, and 1 just being, um, never uses ability, it is worthless. So first off, we have Slash Dash, and let me show you guys what that is. Essentially, you dash forward, and if there's any enemies in the area, you will slash at them, and you will deal damage to them. Uh, however, this doesn't deal a whole ton of damage. It only deals 422 damage, um, which is okay. However, for a 1, it's pretty average. For for our first ability, it's pretty average. I'm gonna give this at least a three, because with the current build I have on him, it's very nice to get around, um, and so on. It's very good mobility ability. Um, nope, don't want to do that. Uh, ability wise, radio howl or radio blind. Now the only difference between radio howl and radio blind is radio howl is slightly slower. Um, essentially, what this does is in an area around you, let me get a little bit more energy, you help. And, um, it opens up enemies to finishers, they don't move, they don't flinch, they just kind of stand there blinded. Uh, they, they will flinch. Um, they'll just kind of stand there blinded, but this is very good. It allows you to open up a ton of enemies to finishers, lock down entire rooms, and allow you to kill a lot of people. This ability is... Probably ex one of Excalibur's um, two really amazing abilities. So I'm going to give this at least a 9. Because it's not quite broken. However, it is extremely, extremely strong. Um, continuing on, we have Radial Javelin. Uh, let me go back in here and look at the abilities. Radial Javelin um, shoots javelins out, not affected by anything. In a certain radius, affected by range. And does about 1,690 damage. Um, it says high damage there. Not really high damage. Uh, to be honest, it's not a very good damage ability. Plus the number of javelins. Like, it would be okay if it wasn't limited to only 12 enemies. Now, it does kill stuff up to a pretty high level. However... Just because it has a capped number of enemies, I'm gonna have to give this, like... A 5, 4-ish. Just because of that capped level of enemies. And I probably shouldn't even give it that. This is one of those abilities you wouldn't use, really. However, his fourth and final ability um, is 
Exalted Blade. It does damage, it has a blind whenever you um, do a slide attack, and it has um, energy drain, which is pretty low. What this does is it summons an intense blade of light, which you can swing out, and those little things go out. Now, if you want to maximize this and make this the best you possibly can, you need to get the uh, Chromatic Blade Augment for Excalibur, which is insanely good. All I remember is you were able to get it from Steel Meridian. However, here's the test. Level 70, um, all-around test with Corrupted Enemies, because I like Corrupted Enemies. They're fun. And yeah, let's do this. So as you can see, I can really easily open these guys up for finishers. For some reason, that wasn't able to instantly kill them. Just taking out the Ancients here. And now I can just pop my four, not even using any weapons, just using abilities. And here's the spin dash. Uh, I didn't quite get him. It has a pretty low range. However, it does blind, which it wasn't doing right there. I could just blind these guys really quickly, cut them down, and so on. However, it's really important to take care of the corrupted um, infested enemies because it will s s very significantly lower um, the amount of damage. And I think that's everyone. One second, gotta sneeze. Never mind. Um, so essentially, it's he's pretty good. Overall, I'll give his ex Exalted Blade a um, 3. Oh, no, no, sorry, not a 3. A 8 or 9. <laughs> uh, because it's just a really solid... Um, it's a really solid ability. I'll give it an 8. Um, just because it's a very solid ability. It's a crit status build. It's very nice. Alright, Excalibur. That was Excalibur. So let's move on to Volt. Uh, Volt is the second starter frame, uh, and he has a very good plethora of good abilities. His first ability is a little shock. Essentially what this will do is this will shock whatever you're pointing at. It'll sometimes change other enemies. It doesn't deal a ton of damage, however, it just it just helps overall. Um, and overall, I'd give this ability a 5, just because you're able to shock, you're able to stun, it's quick to use and everything. And it's just, overall, it's just a good ability. Uh, Volts 2 is speed. Essentially, you speed your Warframe up, going a little bit faster. Now, I don't have too much intensity on this, um, so I don't go super fast. However, I do go faster than normal, which is pretty nice for getting through missions and just moving around a slight bit faster. It didn't last for too long, like I said, it's already over. Um, this one, I'll give a 5 to. It's pretty good. Volt's kit is pretty, you know, average. Uh, next up, we have Volt's shield. Now, this is pretty interesting. Whenever you shoot through this shield... Oh, whoops. I accidentally pressed this part. Whenever you shoot through the shield, it gives you a little bit of electricity damage as well as a 2 times damage multiplier to any critical weapons. So Volt is definitely a critical weapon kind of guy. Um, also, you can pick up this shield and have a little personal shield. However, you're only able to use your secondary, which is really nice. Especially since uh, if you have a critical secondary, uh, it's pretty nice. Volts 4 is he goes up into the air and then leaves a little shockwave. Now, the shockwave will hit enemies, chain two enemies, and just deal a little bit of damage over time. However, at higher levels, this is not too good of a damage ability, such as higher, higher levels, such as level 3 sortie levels. However, there is a fix for it to make this ability pretty good. And let me show you the build on my vault before we go, which is capacitance dealing 3% uh, of the damage is converted into shields, and then that she those shields are split between Volt and his squad mates, which makes Volt a pretty good um, supportive Warframe. And, oh yeah, the shields, I'll definitely give a 7. Um, his 4, I would give a 6. So Volt's just really an all-around good frame. So anyway, let's get this party started. So, as you can see, Volt is able to easily lock down in uh, entire maps of people and give himself, you know, pretty good overshields. Um, 
which is really nice for Volt. However, um, obviously the enemies with shields are obviously kind of having some issues with Volt right now um, because he does damage to their shields. So I guess Volt is pretty good against shielded enemies. And yeah, the only problem I really have with him is he just he takes quite a bit of energy to um, upkeep and do. However, the shields definitely give him a little bit extra survivability. So all around, he's just really solid and uh, just a really good Warframe, you know? Now let's move on to Mag. Where is Mag? Now I'm going to give Mag a unbiased look because I've really got Mag earlier. I saw through all of her iterations and changes. I've seen, you know, now that she's um, fixed what to do with them. Now, this is the only Warframe where I would actually change her build around a little bit. And essentially what I would do is I would move Augur Accord and Natural Talent. And I would instead stick on, where is it, Narrow Minded. And where's the other mod? It's here somewhere. I probably passed it. Oh no, it's a three. It's a three cost. I remember now. And Constitution. Now this will up her duration to as high as possible, which is, to be honest, what you really want to do with Mag. Now, um, Mag has three abilities. She has a pull ability. Um, this will pull enemies towards you, and it will um, deal a very, very insignificant amount of damage. Now, this one I'm going to have to give a three to this ability, because it is honestly not that good. It, it it's um, has some problems. I don't have a target, but I can't show off her two. Her two essentially makes a bubble encircling a entity's head. It'll suck any enemies into it, and when you shoot into it, your bullets will go into the um, the t the bubble, hit something, and then kind of bounce around a little bit. With um, I think a damage. Oh, let me double check something. It might be with a damage um, buff. I'm not 100% sure. Nope, not attachments. Abilities. Yes, with a damage multiplier. My damage multiplier is pretty, pretty, pretty low. Um, yeah. However, let me tell you about something. This, I rank this ability hands down a 10. Because this is the ability that, you know, takes Mag's kit and brings it back from nothing. Because, to be honest, this is absolutely just an insane broken ability. Um, it does a ton of damage. You're able to get consistently headshots. And not only that is when you're leveling up, going through the star chart, this is the ability to use on the specters on the rails. Because they will kill themselves before they kill you, which is insane. That's a lot of help getting through those rails, even though those rails aren't really a big deal. Anyway, continuing on. Or three, a little um, ray that goes out um, based on your duration, kind of like Nova's um, four. And essentially what it does is it strips armor and strips shields. Not very much, but any little thing helps. This is definitely a five ability. Max four, boom, crush. Crest is essentially a, would be a trash ability, unless, um, and I would suggest never to use it. However, it is actually quite nice because you get shields off of enemies hit. Um, so I'd probably give this one, once again, a 5 as well. So, let's simulate. So, I'm going to use the 2 right here. And then I'm just going to go like this to kind of just get me some shields. And then this to kind of strip armor. However, I'm just going to pound. Um, I may have screwed up here and should have killed the ancients first. However, once again, getting those shields to be able to just kind of um, have a little bit. Oh, there we go. The explosion to that ability does a pretty insane damage. However, I can put this little orb thing over anything I want down. And then this is remaining 
things will get dragged into it. And then, yeah, see, so they'll freaking kill themselves. But, however, enemies do terrible damage. However, as you can see, Mag was able to stand in that ginormous, you know, group of things pretty easily without, um, you know, really much concern for her own health because her four just gave that level of soft CC and shields. However, like over there, like you just saw, when the magnetize ends, it closes, it explodes, dealing, I would say, some pretty massive damage. So, anyway, enough talking about mag. I would like to rate the Warframes now. Because each Warframe obviously has its strengths and has its weaknesses. And as you saw, they all walked through that level 70 test of corrupted enemies with a breeze. However, there is varying levels of breeziness. Um, the Warframe, I would consider the best. And it's a close, close, close call is Mac. I consider Mag to be the best because her 2 is so utilitarian. It is the best ability of any ability I've mentioned today. Because it is absolutely insane. However, if I would have been smarter about it, I would have popped her 4, her 3, and then I would have shot um, the Corrupted Ancients out, and then used her 2, and then that would have been a lot better um, in that test. However, that was my fault. It's not Mag's fault. Um, however, her some of her abilities are a little bit less, like, subpar. She's generally the pick you want to pick. Um, and, yeah, I mean, I've, like I said, I've taken this into Kuva Survivals for 40-plus minutes with all three of these Warframes, and Mag is honestly the best I can come out. And, honestly, let me tell you something. All three of these Warframes are great. Um, and right behind Mag, literally, like, right behind her is Excalibur, because Excalibur is just all around good. He's got, a, you know, some hard CC, a really good damage ability, and a movement ability, which honestly puts him above, almost, in some players' eyes, the other two. But for me, Mag, just that... The capacity to kill with her two is insanely high, and um, is is just insanely good. And then the combinations of all three of her abilities, all three of her good abilities, just make her really nice. And then last but not least, we have Volt. Now, the reason Volt is so high is because a his shield is great, not only for this but for Eidolon hunting. And, um, to be honest, the discharge, the shock, the speed, all of his abilities are really well-rounded. And he's honestly, if you want a crowd control frame, one that's able to control the battlefield really well. If almost, I would say, switch Volt and Mag's, like, descriptions. Mag is the high damage one. Volt controls everything with electricity. Volt is honestly, like you saw, I had the entire map on lockdown the second I went into it, which was very powerful and worked very well into Volt's flavor. Now, I would like to thank you all very much for watching this, um, this review. If you have any disagreements, I would like you to, you know, post them in the comments below. To be honest, um, just because uh, I said Mag was the best does not mean I'm uh, a bad Warframe player. I've just uh, seen a lot. However, this is obviously my personal preference. Whatever Warframe you think is best is what you think is best. Uh, and it was really hard to pick between all three of these, uh, partly because I have a slight biased bias towards Excalibur, um, because he was my starter frame. And I have a slight uh, bias against Mag since I saw her rework and saw, you know, just how badly I th I thought how badly it hit her. However, from seeing uh, a few people play Mag, a few of my new player friends play Mag, as well as a few um, uh, a few things on Mag and her abilities, um, 
honestly, I think she she does the best out of all three of these Warframes. However, all three of these Warframes have their strengths, have their weaknesses, and are insanely good. However, I'd like to thank you guys for watching this video.